Okay. All right, my friends, welcome to the Truth Tribe. I'm Dawn Thompson, and I thank you guys for being here so much. You are all perfect, exactly where you are right now. I know it's hard to believe that, but you are, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with you, and I love you all very much. Now, when I say there's nothing wrong with you, I absolutely mean it, because there is nothing wrong with you. You've been told that, and you've been programmed that, and you've been taught that, but um, I call bullshit. There's nothing wrong with you. You just have to know who you are. So we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight, um, only because it's coming up everywhere in the universe. And I don't think that we're intentionally trying to um, run these negative stories. It's just coming up. All right. So the topic is time to dump your pessimistic story. And the best way to start this is change, 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 right? Change. But the new perspective that many people want right now is they want freedom, right? You want freedom, but you don't want to change. So what you really want when it comes to freedom is something that you keep looking outside of yourself instead of within, and that's confidence. And that's where the pessimism comes from. The, 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 the pessimism that's coming up on the planet is if I critique th something I want, I don't have to feel lack of confidence. I don't have to feel insecurities. And all these things are coming up. And so we're using our stories. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. And when when we're lacking confidence and we're looking outside of ourselves right this presents the challenge that keeps you in a cycle of seeking something from someone else or somewhere else or some experience that will never deliver the freedom that you seek because it's always you shifting you right no matter what's happening out there and that's really hard to wrap your brain around why because that's all you know that's all most people know even if you do the work with me, I am full. Sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, I know better. No, no, no. So I tried to kind of take tonight as a solution to that. How do we protect ourselves from that, right? Change is not the boulder that's sitting in front of all of you. It's avoiding what makes you insecure. And it's causing inability to receive what you truly want, right? Money, love, love is a big one, right? Health friendships, community, challenges, those loo they're looping. And the looping, they're simply, when they loop, they're this, this visual aftermath of you and only you stepping into something that you're familiar with. So when you keep getting this looping in an area you don't like, it's just because you're familiar with that. You know how to do that. So change is, is better said insecurities. That's it. Like if, if you can look at changes going, oh, I don't like change. It's not you don't like change. You just don't like feeling insecure. So instead of understanding your insecurities and, and the, that they're surfacing due to simply doing something you've never done before, and instead of making everything so difficult, right, it's time to simply plan small doses of change. Like you don't have to like... Some people are like, when, when you give them a change, you're like, oh my God, or oh, I don't know if I can do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. My answer is just do small. Small doses of change, all of a sudden you won't even know you did it. So small doses of, of trying something you've never tried before, okay? That you know will give you the thing that you want or the intended outcome, which is your freedom. And so this planet please know that it was designed on a polarity programming, okay? Polarity meaning two extremes, right? This or that, okay? And so meaning, and again, I, I want you guys to hear this out of your mind, this and that, right and wrong, good and bad, suffering and success. So, so many of us are very blind to the fact that we we do not need to criticize or judge or condemn or de demean others even for things that they're doing that are not so welcoming or not so kind or pretty downright evil and dark, okay? If you're truly not judging others and you're just not in that polarity, good, bad, I'm good, you're bad, right? If you're not judging, you will accept that sometimes you need assholes as change agents. And you have to start looking at life that way. We have to start understanding that these change agents sometimes aren't the best, most attractive looking scenarios. Everyone has a role in your reality. Listen to that again. Everyone has a role in your reality. 
And I teach this so much, you guys. I feel I, like there are times that I feel like a broken record, but you came with insecurities and they are, a, your insecurities are attracting pressure to get you to grow, not to get them to grow. It's to get you to grow, right? Because of all this that we have shifted uh, up through this timeline, and again, this is called the entirety of the last 2020 some years, okay? We've been in the era and the generate this, this era of Pisces, okay? The age of Pisces, and which is a sign of the fish, right? Flip flop, the sign of wishy washy, flip, flip flop, back and forth, left and right, want it, don't want it, indecisive, delusion, confusion. Do what you're told, blind faith belief systems. That's what Piscean age is, blind faith, doing things that are self-sacrificing. That's a sign of self-sacrifice. Okay, so we've left that and now we've shifted into the age of Aquarius, the age of knowledge. Okay, so this is why everybody is so tripped up right now. So learning who you are, where that you can be pessimistic will be where your freedom lies, okay? You are pessim, you know, like think about it. You are, if you are maybe pessimistic about money, about health, about wealth, about family, about community, career, education. And the biggest one of all that I see people right now struggling with is love. Nothing on this planet that you are experiencing is new except for the change of how you can connect with another human being on the planet, like in a split second. That's what the only thing that's changed. Everything you're experiencing is cycling from generation after generation. It's the same thing. It's just in a different speed, okay? But you're still being tasked with the same experience, which is the ability to deliver who you are to another person when you're communicating, whether it's in person, a digital device, through a text, through an audio, through a phone call, it doesn't matter how you connect. But if you don't know who you are, they won't know who you are either. Or you can get scammed, right? If you're not using your intuition, your inner truth, faith in yourself, not faith in some blind random person outside of you. Right. So much as we want to say, like, we want to say it's time for personal growth. It is. I mean, I cannot push this hard enough. Right. Personal growth and expansion. But I'm I'm more on the 10 xing expanding your life. And I'm watching people who want more. Right. Who want to expand, who want to be in community, who want to be in love, who want to be healthy and wealthy but have the biggest, most pessimistic belief systems that they are not willing to look at. Or, you know, or you're using it, but it's just so hard to hear yourself say it because you said it so much, you don't even know it's coming out of you, right? Because the solution of what we really want seems so daunting to achieve that criticizing it or a system to achieve it is a lot easier to avoid than the baby steps of change, right? And this is all... This is happening all, all day long in every live group setting, social setting, business setting, digital media setting that I encounter, okay? Let me tell you what's wrong with this scenario or this person or this situation, and that's why it won't work or that's why it's broken or it's, a, you know, it's a constant. We're talking about everything that's bad. And I'm like, I go back 20 years, 30 years. I was doing the same thing. Why are we always... Talking about what's bad. It's not new. It's a stupid story that you have and only you, you and only you can change it. Okay. We, my husband and I were out of town last weekend, um, last week and, and we were sitting just a, in a restaurant and, and, um, we met this beautiful Irish couple right on our trip. And it was fascinating to me because my husband and I were listening to her and she was so stuck in her story about the two presidents coming up, whoever they were, will be to vote for. And then she was just like, I don't want any of them. But she said, I, but I have no control to fix it. And we were both so fascinated by this when she was so pessimistic intent on two things that she had no control over. So I said to her, if you have no say in who's in the hot seat, 
Focus on your own, what your own seat looks like, right? You're so lost in others, you aren't looking at your own seat. And I don't mean this by just the one thing she's talking about. I'm talking about in business, at home, in love, and your, your children. It's time to see pessimism, my friends, and how changing your story and how you deal with it changes your whole life. Like if she stopped focusing on that, she'd have something else amazing to focus on. So don't just accept the story that you're stuck in. Call it whatever you like. Pessimism, negativity, Eeyore, complaining, instead of who the heck do you want to be, right? And are you conveying that frequency to others in your words, in your body language, in your actions, and most of all, in your confidence, right? So knowing your gifts, knowing your challenges, knowing your boulders, knowing your karma are the game changer. But I can tell you guys, hands down, from all the work that I do, this is the one thing that most people are avoiding and they're not you're just not going to get out of it in the next months to, to years coming years okay because we're being tasked with getting to know who we are and how to share that truth with others and a lot of my clients including myself for a long time struggled with it and then when you start realizing who you are you don't feel a need to change you're just like oh i'm okay with being me and you be you right um we did the the when Two weekends ago, we had such an awakening teaching this DMT method, showing everyone how to see all of your energy, not just your negative, not just your positive parts, but to create this high frequency 10x in every part of your life, right? There's a novel idea. Why can't we make our whole life 10x and expanded and beautiful? Be confident in all of your life. And, and this is something that I'm not giving up on. I'm not going to back down on. I'm going to keep pushing it and teaching it and showing it to you. Why? Because the planets are telling you to do this. I'm just a messenger. Okay. I'm just the messenger and I'm trying to get you guys to see it, but that's a big deal right now. Right. So um, I, I just want to make sure you guys are understanding that the planets are going to be forcing you to feel into your life. Right. Feel the need. You're going to feel this need like I got to take action. And you're probably already feeling it. Some of you comment, go ahead and comment in the chat if you're already feeling that. So it's literally time to quit your bitching and make a new story that embodies ownership of your life. Okay. So here's your simple solution. Okay. I want you to ask yourself, what, what topic am I most pessimistic about? Really, because we all have something, okay? I guarantee you, you can sit just sit back. I sit back. I was in a lot of business meetings and events this last week. And I would sit back and listen. I'm like, wow, that's their thing. That's their thing. Oh, there's that thing. And they would find something to be negative or pessimism about, like the, the deepest pessimism, okay? So I want you to ask yourself, what topic am I most pessimistic around, Okay. And then what's the new story you're going to share instead that hold 1000% ownership for changing it in your life? It's a big deal, right? So now you have to make a plan on what you will say, what you will do and how you will, you know, and what you're going to act like in this new story. Because if you don't have a plan, it's not going to happen. It is just not going to happen, my friends. And so Let's just use an example. I want you guys to think about the, the hot topic right now because it was coming up on dating when I was talking to a lot of these groups, right? Let's talk love, okay? So just imagine I'm the person I, I need to find a husband if I, if I have an amazing husband, by the way, but we'll just get the amazing husband off the table for a minute, okay? My pessimistic story is that I want to love. I want to be in love, but everyone I go on dates with are losers, you cannot attract losers or pessimistic or whining or complaining people if you are not doing the same somewhere, okay? So if you show up and you say, this is who I am, this is what I'm looking for, this is what I want, tell me about yourself. And if you can't decipher that they want the same as you do, right, or they want the same for you, it's a very good indication you need to start working on your inner truth if you don't know that and you keep sticking with them too long. 
and and which is in it, it, it this can you can apply it to your husband and spouse as well i'm just giving you an example of dating um serious dating like some of you are committed to or you want to date it's easier to figure out a lot of my clients that are on this call or have been on this call um if you've been with me privately um you've been through the idi academy with me but if you haven't and you're on this call go take the idi academy on my courses Right. And, and you 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 have to understand by understanding who you are in that I deserve it academy. Right. It's the full kit and caboodle. You get in there and you go, OK, no, you know what? Then you're ready for the DMT retreat to go, OK, now I need to know myself deeper. We need an I teach the class and I'm learning stuff about myself. When you know who you are, my friends, you know what you want. Whether you are looking for a date, whether you want to get married, if you want to be in a marriage or you just want to be in a committed relationship, or if you're too afraid to tell people what you want, guess what? <laughs> right? You're going to keep getting people who are afraid to tell you what they want. And you're both going to be miserable and pessimistic and negatively joined at the hip, blaming others why your life sucks. I, I'm telling you this because I hear it daily from clients from friends, from family, you name it. I heard it from some men in these men's groups I was talking about this last weekend, right? So this is the biggest moment in your life right now to acknowledge, okay? And this applies to work and money or health, whatever it is. I want you to ask yourself and to step into this, I need to know who I am from my programming, again, that's the IDI Academy we talked about, to my soul blueprint, which is my birth chart, to deep diving into my new plan and reestablishing my pessimism plan into my badassery plan. And if you don't plan on being frustrated because we're not hearing ourselves. And I, I listen to people talk about the, these pessimistic stories like, oh, this is the problem. This is the problem. This is why I'm not doing it. My answer is just change the story. What is the story that would swap with the, the negative story why you can't have it? What is the story that you can have it? Or what is the story that you're going to have instead? And watch how the entire energetic frequency of your reality shifts. Okay, it's a big deal right now. And it's hard for people to wrap their brain around this. So let's go right into the planetary update. Now, someone sent me, um, someone did ask on um, the, the Truth Tribe Q&A. You might even be on here. Um, but they asked if um, I could go over this tonight. So I'm going to share a screen with you for a second. And um, I'm going to show you just for a minute what I'm going to explain to you. And then I'm going to pull it back off. Okay. So this screen is what's happening for the next month. So this is the month of April. Okay. And I'm showing you this because. Um, okay. Okay. Let's see if, let me wait till it pops up on your screen. Okay. I'm showing you this, my friends, because I want you all to understand these are all the planets in the sky. This guy, guy down here is a symbol. It's not a planet. And this guy over here on the left in the 12th house is a symbol, not a planet. So I want you to count up here. This is the blue on the top of this wheel, blue on top. That's Pisces. Red right here, that's Aries on the outer wheel at the top. And then the little green strip is Taurus. You have through the month of April, which is why it is a stellar, mind-blowing month that's going to shift humanity because you have all the planets of the, the, the constellation of the sky, the <laughs> galaxy, is all jammed into these three house, these three signs right here, okay? And you've got one, two, three, four, five of them sitting in Aries. Oh, sorry, six of them, Okay. So when I go back and I start explaining all this description to you, I want you to understand why all these planets up here in this top corner, you have one planet over here, Pluto, that little blue guy on the top right hand side, and he's so slow, he ain't going to join that party. Okay, so now I want you to understand you have three planets at the top here in Pisces, and then you count them six planets here in Aries, and you have two more sitting here in Taurus. Okay. So now that is opposing the south node, which is really not a big deal to all of you right now, because I'm not going to get too deep into, I'm not going to get deep into the, the chart and I'm not going to give you an astrology class. I'm sharing all of this with you because 
By the way, happy April Fools. It's April 1st and it's Mercury retrograde. It's not a joke. <laughs> Mercury retrograde started on April Fools, so you need to expect change. So let's just start with Mercury retrograde and I'll move into that whole jam up of planets and what they're doing to you. What are they doing to you? They're going to kick your ass and tell you to stop being so pessimistic and go get your shit and win. That's what they're doing. So now we can be done because that's it. That's what they're saying, but I'm going to give you more depth. I'm going to give you more detail. Okay. So here's the first thing on the chart I just shared with you. Mercury retrograde today is um, April 1st, just started. We had last week, which is the, I was sharing you the shadow window. So you still felt it, which Mercury governs the realm of communication. Essentially, it can influence, think about what it influences, conversations, thought patterns, the dynamics of your immediate surroundings. It oversees transportation, technology, text messages, social media. So in case you guys were wondering how a planet can single-handedly cause drama, when it slows down, all those things slow down and people get miscommunications, arguments, mistakes, or whatever, or they try to cause drama because it's slowing down and they have to listen to their own damn selves and they don't like it. So Mercury retrograde, one of those planets up in Aries that I just showed you, right, is an opportunity to revisit conversations that could have led to unresolved conversations in the past. So did you speak your truth? Maybe you did, so you don't have to go back. Were you able to assert yourself with clarity and confidence? This can also serve as a second chance, specifically in situations where you may have overreacted or were quick to judge a book by its cover, okay? Now, also Mercury in Aries is quite the expert at jumping to conclusions. So consider this an opportunity to pause. Remember, Mercury retrograde is just the pause button. It does. It just means slow. It does not mean no. Okay, and so approaching conversations with a completely fresh perspective or moving on from them and quit going backwards. So in simple terms, you're being directed to go inside, stare down your demons and come out as a lighthouse with your brightest dream shining. There is no going backwards. To You have to embrace everything that's pushing you inside to see how beautiful you are and say no to darkness. That's all you have to do. Okay, so that's Mercury retrograde today. Okay. Now we have this jam up again in Pisces, Aries, and Taurus, all the planets in the sky. So I'm just going to say they're all up there in the corner. Okay. And then you asked me to review what is this affecting us. So next Monday, so we start with the last, the, today, Monday. So last Monday, we had a lunar eclipse in Libra. Today, we have Mercury retrograde in Aries. Monday, and I'm telling you early because you're going to feel it, you already feel it probably today. We have a solar eclipse at 19 degrees in Aries on April 8th, which is Monday, okay? And a solar eclipse in Aries is anything but subtle, especially when it's joined, sitting in that constellation up there, by Chiron, which is the wounded healer. So it's where we were wounded. We're here to heal and empower and teach others as an adult where we were hurting. Now we're going to go help them not to hurt. So this ignites blaze in you. It's fiery. It's bringing your energy. It's pushing us towards new beginnings, uncharted territories of self-discovery. So if you want to start something new, my friends, this is the day, even if it's, as I talked about earlier, in baby steps, baby minimal steps to change. You don't have to change your whole life. Just take one, one day, one change and watch what happens under this solar eclipse. So this is all happening during Mercury retrograde, also in Aries. So it's going to leave you torn between, think about it from this way, impulsive, driven, drive, action, Aries, moon, right? And the Mercury is slowing us down, go introspection and pause and take a break. So you're kind of like, oh my God, what do I pick? Which I was talking about earlier, right? We're leaving that left, right, in, out, should, shouldn't, Okay. And so Aries is going to keep pushing all this energy into Aries and saying, it's okay if you feel it for a moment, feel it and move forward. The fearless pioneer is what Aries is. It's the pioneer of the Zodiac. It symbolizes passion and courage and potential and new beginnings. It forges paths that are unique to you. So I want you to go and look if you, wherever you have Aries in your birth chart, that's where you're going to have this blast open of awakening. So if you don't know what your birth chart is, go onto my website, tap tools, 
Have tools, opens up, free birth chart, run your birth chart and see where the sign of Aries sits in your birth chart. And whatever house it's in, that's where you're going to feel this, this solar eclipse. So if you can go find that little ram symbol on your chart, that's where you're going to get it. Okay. And so it's a new beginning. It's a new starting. My solar eclipse new beginnings are all in my 11th house of public. And I just launched all my new event series for the DMT methods and all my deep diving. So shocker that I'm, I bl blasted it all out on this timeline. Where it sits for you, you will know exactly what it's pushing you to go do, okay? So do not get stuck because Aries is going to symbolize passion and it's got, got your new beginnings, guys. And so this eclipse demands space for fresh starts. It's necessitating closure of old chapters that don't serve you. It's going to push you into a room and create room for like new potential within you, okay? This is next Monday, but I know you're already feeling it. I already feel it, right? It's called a super moon because it's the it's when we have these solar eclipses like this, um, it's a full solar eclipse, right? It's the closest when the moon is closest to the earth. That's why, okay? Again, last week, lunar eclipse, this week, solar eclipse on Monday. Um, and again, it's this solar eclipse is a lot easier than last week's lunar eclipse, right? Because it was in Libra, it was kind of putting closure to things. It was bringing up stuff from the past that you're like, no, I'm done with that, right? Partnership stuff. Solar eclipses are new beginnings. It's a new moon, okay? It's at 19 degrees of Aries. Again, if you know your birth chart, you can download it and go see. Um, but because there's so many planets up in Aries right now, you'll be just feeling it all together. It's Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac. It brings new beginnings out of the blue. Um, let's think about Aries as the God of war right? The energy of aggression, forward, intense energy. Now, do you need to be angry and at war? No, <laughs> you can take the high frequency of Aries, which is playfulness and drive and assertiveness and wanting to achieve a new story. That's what we just talked about earlier. Make a new story. Give your, write a new story for yourself. Because the energy is opening up to you, my God, my, my friends, in, in, in the sign of Aries, with light and it can very much push you into a very angry and aggressive state or it can create in conflict instead of creating right creation and and creativity so you have two options i'm just preparing you a mercury retrograde and aries and all this aggression energy watch yourselves okay instead i want you guys to start focusing on your freedom your self-freedom going so low it's about inner authority and courage and sovereignty and, you know, encourages us to break new ground and to go into a new adventure. And particularly because it's going to get reinforced now by those last two planets I showed you at the top of the wheel. I'll pull it back up again in a second so you guys can see them all together now that I'm explaining them. Um, but it's right next to and it's reinforcing the Jupiter Uranus conjunction and means basically Jupiter is going to sit on top of Uranus in the sky. Okay. And so Jupiter, right, is, is, and, and okay, so that's moving to the 20th. Okay. So next week on the 8th, you're going to get this solar eclipse. And then, you know, a few days later on the 20th, you're going to have this Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which means they're sitting on top of each other. And that's a slow move. So it's not just for a day. What it's doing is sparking the rest of your year. Mm -hmm. Jupiter rules expansion and knowledge and growth and foreign and long distance and education. Okay. Uranus is a sudden burst of change and freedom and, and, and technology and astrology and expansion as well. Okay. So. All of this energy is literally directing you to do something different to change the pattern, to write a new story, and then make a plan to make it happen. The second you plan for a new story, that is absolutely 100% ownership of who you want to be, the universe literally will open the path for you. It literally opens it up, okay? So in a nutshell, this polarity or duality of going, you know, out, like go out and in, go out, do it, do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it, right? Wait, should I be an introverted? No, wait, should I go out and heal it? No, should wait, I should look within. No, I should go out there. 
that's what you're feeling. And my answer is, is just go in and make a plan and don't worry about how it feels, right? It's doing the same thing to you by pulling you into extremes that it always has in the past and in your lifetimes. And this is why this is happening for you to step back in, know who you are. And when you know that no extreme external bullshit, which is total bullshit, right? Will pull on you because you're walking as a lighthouse. You know who you are, where you're going to show up, what you're doing on a daily basis. There is no negotiating anymore. Okay, so that's the best way I can describe all this for you guys. Everybody right here, I am courage. Tap it into your nervous system. Tap it in. Courage rules is, is an energy of, of Aries. I am courage. I am love. I am truth. I know courage. I know love. I know truth. One more. I am courage. I am love. I am truth. I'm going to open up a little mini um, Q&A here to share what pessimism you're catching in yourself that needs a new story. It could just be a topic like, ooh, right? I'm catching that, Dawn. Um, because if you can see it and you can say it, you can, once you write it, once you speak it, it's done. That's where the new story comes in. Or you ask someone, see this topic and I keep saying it, it can you give me an idea of how I can rewrite that story to a, a more optimistic, like story that gives me vision and passion? Think of it from that perspective. Okay. Um, Let's see, this says, let's see, here's some Q&As coming in. I'm not sure if I'm going to read this right, but I'm going to read it to you. When you want love and or, and or you're married or committed in this relationship and they don't want to change. Oh, that's really good. Okay. When you can't see yourself, you will always blame them. That's the best way I can say this. Um, you are the frequency, right? So if you're not speaking your truth frequency and you're tiptoeing around someone and accusing them of not being who you want them to be. It's you hiding from yourself. Just because someone doesn't want to be who you want them to be at the time you want them to be, it doesn't mean they don't want to ever. It just means that you're wanting them to change for you so you can avoid you. And that doesn't work. So you changing you, then they go, oh, I didn't know you wanted that. Oh, I didn't know you were going to go there. They will find it in their own timeline, but you are the one. So it's not about they don't want to change. A lot of times they just don't know how. And you're the blueprint. You're the lighthouse bringing the, the ships into shore, correct? So um, it always is you hiding from yourself when someone's bringing that stuff up. Okay. Um, let's see. What does this say? Why are so many, why are so many pessimistic still? If there's so much opportunity to break free, that's easy, you guys. That's histor That's history of habitual programming of suffering, right? Religion has told you to suffer. Religion has told you to give up your every last penny to, to, to an invisible, non-seeing deity. I'm not saying give up religion and, and spirituality. No, 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 no. You know me. But religion has done a doozy on you. Education's done a doozy on you. Um, medicine has done a doozy. I mean, there is nothing in your history that hasn't been habitually programmed to keep you suffering. No one has programmed you to heal, to feel confident, to feel safe, right? Even in your epigenetic lines of lineage, your ancestors, right? So who or where it's come from doesn't matter. It's it's what do you want to be free? What story are you going to rewrite to be free? If that makes sense. Okay. Um, I got one more coming in here. Any more questions, you guys? Feel free to throw them in the chat. Let's see. Okay, this is good. What if we don't hear ourselves with a pessimism story? That's pretty good because it's true, right? I don't think I even hear myself sometimes until I'm like, I was asking myself, what do you complain about to yourself all the time? And I was like, oh, goodness sakes, right? I got to stop that. And I just got to own what I want. And even if I go slow boat or if I go slow boat, a fast boat, then slow boat, it doesn't matter how I get there. That's so if you're saying, what if we don't hear ourselves with a pessimism story? Um, what do you avoid discussing and what do you complain about most? right? It's hard to hear if it's, if it's all, you know, so I get that. But if you just write down, what do I avoid not wanting to talk about? 
And then what do I complain about most? What topic? Those are typically where you find yourself being the most pessimistic or what do you fight people on? Like that won't work. That won't work. That won't work. And they're like, well, I do it every day. It seems to be working pretty good. And they're like, no, it's because you did this because you had that because you did that. And they're constantly saying it's because you're different. And the answer is, okay, that's the pessimism story. So that's how you can hear it in yourselves, if that makes better sense. Yeah. Okay. All right, my friends. Um, I want to remind you guys, um, that's kind of, unless there's some more questions coming in, I'm happy to answer them. I want to just keep reminding you guys in Zoom, I did post it into the chat. Um, make sure if you're not in already, I see a lot of you already have joined in our Facebook Truth Tribe group. It's free, but I'll be adding updates every time I put stuff in there. I'll add in, you know, the reminders and stuff in there. Um, and it's just Facebook groups and uh, Truth Tribe with Dawn. And so remember to go to go join in there just so you know you're getting the updates that are always going on in there. If you guys are struggling to know who you are right now, okay, um, it's very easy to go on my website under events, under courses, right? Just on my homepage and start with the IDI Academy. You know, if you are able to work with me and a lot of people who haven't, you know, it, it takes a lot of investment if you really want to learn it. You will literally understand your iPod and your sonar and why you are here and how you walk out the door and how you do what you want, who you are, how you present yourself to others, right? How you present yourself to the world. Start there. People ask me all the time, what do I do first? That, okay? Then you're like, well, what if I want more and I want to upgrade? Take, take, go get courses in the warrior pass. And then, right, you're like, nope, I've got a good understanding of that. Then you come to the retreat. Then you come to a DMT method retreat, right? It's next level deep dive of who you are, how and how you want to live your life 10x next level, okay? And so you can watch the two courses and come to the retreat too. You just have to get through those so you know what we're talking about and you're not completely bamboozled. Like, what is she talking about, right? So next retreat is in Denver. It's already on the website. If you want to be there, you better get in before it closes because this last one was mind-blowing, mind-blowing, mind-blowing. I'll start putting some testimonials out soon. Wonderful haircut. Okay, so I have a haircut. I have my hair pulled up. <laughs> it's in a clippy, but thank you. Um, I pulled it all back. Thank you. That was a very nice compliment, Pat. I appreciate it. Um, I pull, put it up in a little pony today. So... Next DMT retreat, the next DMT method retreat will be in Denver. It is ideserveitnow.com. It's all right there. You can't miss it. If you are listening to this after in a live session, go, you are on the YouTube or you on Spotify. Um, the links will all for all of these, these locations with True Tribe, the Truth Tribe um, Facebook group. Uh, the link will be in there as well as the retreats and the IDI Academy. So if you guys have any questions, you know how to find me. I'm so easy to find. Find me with any questions. I see you all soon. Happy solar eclipse, Mercury retrograde. Slow your booties down. I promise it's all going to be okay. It's getting you to wake up and be your most badass selves. And that I think is the best news ever. So enjoy the slowdown. Appreciate who you are. Find me if you have any questions. I love you. Thank you for joining me tonight, you guys. Love you. Have a great night. Brightest blessings.